Very good afternoon all. Uh, so myself is Raghu, so, uh, so we'll be looking into the shell scripting, uh, I mean uh, shell, shell programming today. So, so is everyone uh, able to uh, view my screen? Okay, thanks. Uh, so, so before getting started, uh, so I, I would like to uh, tell you, like, uh, uh, we'll just go with the basics and all. What is the shell scripting and uh, what it does basically? And uh, so let's. And uh, what is the importance of a shell in an operating system? So, um, yeah. So let's say we have, we have the users, okay? So sitting on top of, uh, I mean, I mean, working on top of hardware, and we have certain hardware connected. I mean, we have some hardware available. So whether it could be uh, like a CPU and some memory and some I/O, whatever it is, I mean, disks and all, some storages or uh, tape drives connected. So whatever it is, we have so much hardware. So as a normal user, okay, so. See, as a normal user, I cannot directly go and talk to this particular hardware. Okay, so there has to be a medium between. So, so, so uh, that's the reason we are installing an operating system in between. Okay, an user and a hardware. Okay, so now user is the one going to interact with the operating system. Okay, and and hence we are going to work on. The file, okay, and so what are the hi uh, hardware responses? So as a user, we'll we'll view on that particular screen. I mean, uh, we'll we'll see the output or whatever the job we have uh, sent to the process basically. Now, so coming to the Linux and Unix operating systems, okay. So your uh, I mean uh, I mean your complete operating system is not responsible of managing this particular hardware, okay. Whereas you have certain part, okay, of the operating system which take care of uh, okay so managing this particular hardware okay so that particular one is nothing but called as kernel okay so kernel is nothing but a uh, uh, heart of the operating system okay what it does is it manages everything basically okay hardware connected to that particular operating system and whatever the process you run everything everything will be taken care of your, your kernel okay so now so the problem with the I mean with the Linux and Unix operating systems is okay so as even as a normal user okay we are user and as a normal user we cannot directly talk to the uh, I mean kernel because okay it is very difficult to uh, write a program or write a uh, I mean write a command where the kernel can understand because kernel is a very low level language okay that is the reason why people started facing difficulties so that's the reason so we are administrators so of course if it is a developer yes so they can write some code and manipulate something and perform something on the hardware but uh, i mean uh, so most uh, i mean the jobs are uh, i mean uh, pretty increasing and uh, i mean uh, so more uh, i mean more innovative and so many things came into the picture okay so that's the reason administrator job is also has become one of the part okay some part of, uh, of basically uh, I mean, some part of uh, I mean industry is being occupied by administrators, which manages that particular operating system. So we're talking about Linux operating system, Linux administrators. Okay, so we are administrators, not developers. We don't write code basically where this particular kernel can understand. So that's the reason. Okay, so a shell has been introduced in between. Okay, shell has been introduced in between this particular user and this particular kernel. So shell has been introduced here. So what it does basically? So it does nothing basically. It takes the input from the user and and it converts into the human uh, whatever the kernel understandable language. So it converts that particular input and what the kernel returns again it returns to the user. This is what happens. And if anyone has an idea like how these particular commands are being executed in uh, uh, I mean. Uh, uh, I mean in Linux and Unix operating systems is through most of the scenarios it is through CLI okay so whenever you execute something on the CLI or a terminal 
a ls command or something like that okay so it is going to you are executing in a shell that is nothing but you are executing in a shell and shell sends that particular instruction to the kernel and kernel performs something on the i o or hardware okay and whatever it returns okay it returns to the kernel kernel again returns to the shell and shell again returns to the command prompt so what shell is going to do here it is convert it converts that particular output into a human readable format and it displays on the output screen so this is the major job of the shell in an linux operating system so so uh, the, as this is the major role okay so this is not a, of course this is a part of an operating system but an operating system can run without a shell okay so shell okay without a shell uh, there is of no use of an operating yes operating system can run but there is absolutely no use with the operating system because we cannot run okay anything without a shell okay so we want to execute a command so that's that anyhow we require a shell so there are so many shells has been introduced by so many authors okay so among them so many are famous but uh, in our classes we are going to talk very uh, one language which is very famous so that is uh, bash programming or bash, bash shell script so there are so many shells available uh, i mean around the market or or the i mean scenarios but bash is the which is the pretty advanced one and it is very easy very easy for the administrators okay syntaxes are very easy okay and it it is so powerful okay so that's the reason this uh, we are going to talk completely our shell scripting through bash shell okay yes so you can ask me basically what is the difference and so many shells are there what is the difference is going to happen yes there are differences and the commands which we are going to talk about okay in our classes so those command syntaxes are different from shell to shell so that is the only difference and apart from that the commands whatever you execute either you execute ls command cat command those are common you take you execute any shell those commands is fine but there are some sh shell commands okay so uh, uh, those certain commands for those commands only the syntaxes will be different okay so we are going to talk about bash so the bash is nothing but a born born again shell and prior to bash okay there was a one more shell uh, used to be which is a famous one so that is born shell so born shell is the one which you can find in, in each and every operating system you take unix you take linux you take mactonish anywhere you'll find a shell that is born shell okay so that uh, there are a couple of guys who has written uh, rewritten this particular born shell and they have written a, a shell which is more advanced more faster more easy okay kind of way so they have written a bash shell and uh, you have csc shell so most of the programmers are uh, if they want to write any any kind of script basically to execute on any server they prefer uh, csh because the syntax is almost similar to the c language so these are the pretty uh, i mean widely used shells uh, all over the i mean uh, environments and so we are co we are completely going to talk about the bash shell so this is the shell we are going to talk about and so uh, let's uh, uh, i mean uh, so why we are going with the shell scripting so we are here okay to learn the shell scripting basically so there has to be some use uh where this particular shell script can be uh, i mean i mean where you can apply basically so why we use shell scripting so the first major task why we use shell scripting is nothing but to automate the tasks to automate the day to day job whatever we do okay so we use shell scripting automate the tasks so whatever the jobs or tasks or jobs you can say whatever we do in our day to day job okay so if you want to automate those things yes so obviously the basic thing you have to look into is nothing but a shell scripting okay so by doing this particular automation what you are going to do so you automated your job so that is nothing but you 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 created a tool okay so you know how how tools are so powerful in the even in your day to day life also yeah, i mean uh, so tools are like something like uh, uh, you can talk about a screwdriver okay so can you uh, can you imagine a day without a screwdriver and to remove that particular screw from a wall or uh, from a wooden 
thing. So it is highly, I mean, it is possible, but you have to struggle a lot. So the same way, uh, the scripting language, shell scripting is also nothing but you are going to make tools basically, okay, which you can make your job easy. So uh, I mean, but by automating this particular job, you made some tools, and also what you are going to achieve is nothing but you are going to save a lot of time. You are going to save a lot of time. So let's say uh, I mean a, a job is there. Uh, I mean a certain job which you need to execute in a certain point of time. So uh, what you need to do is if you are if you are not going with the scripting. So what you have to do is you have to log into the I mean you have to get into the you have to log into that particular server at the point of time which you need to execute that particular job and you have to do it manually. But if you go with the scripting, okay, so what you can do is you can schedule that particular, you automate your the task whatever you want to perform and you simply place that particular script in the cron job, now cron is going to be taken care. Okay, if it is a single command, of course, without writing a script also your cron can take care, but if it is a multiple commands, okay, which you want to group it, yes, you have to take the help of shell scripting, so hence you're going to save a lot of time. And also, like time saving, let's say uh, you you need to perform a patching, uh, let's say a core administrator job, what do you need to do? So you need to perform, let's say a bug has been, uh, uh, I mean bug has been identified and you need to perform that particular uh, uh, a patch to that particular servers, okay, number of servers which are affected with that particular bug, okay, so what you need to do, let's say uh, nowadays, uh, I mean, uh, IT industry is growing like anything, so you can see thousands and uh, lakhs of servers in the, uh, uh, I mean, pretty small companies also medium scale. So, so to handle those servers, so ha you have to be, uh, okay, so uh, let's say you are going manually, you require so much time, okay, to perform on 100 servers, let's say, to perform a single job on 100 servers, a single person, okay, so it may take a day if you are going to manually, okay, but if you go with the script thing, from a single server or from a single desktop, you can apply the particular patch to all the hundred servers at a time. That depends upon your network performance and all things, but still, yes, that is possible. You save a lot of time. Okay, uh, let's say a minute is being taken uh, for executing a script on a single server. Okay, so hundred servers means, so if you have to log into each and every server, you have to execute a script. Obviously, it may take some time, but if you go with the scripting, you can parallelly push that particular script or patch okay, to all the servers at a time and you can see the output in less than 5 minutes, I can say, if it is a 100 server. But if you go with normally, yes, it is going to take a half, half of the day or a day also. So you see a lot of time over there basically with the shell scripting and yes, so hence you are assuming manpower. So the same example, okay, so the patching is so critical which has to be pushed in couple of hours, okay, so you have to you have to pull each and every resource available into that particular job and you have to perform patching manually, so instead of to avoid that one, again, yes, okay, a single person can perform, uh, yes, uh, I mean a single job on multiple servers at a time. So these are the pretty advantages and you can say are, uh, I mean, uh, the usage of the shell scripting basically. Yes, so we're talking so much about uh, okay uh, advantage of shell scripting, but yes, there are some disadvantages also with the shell scripting. So what are those disadvantages? Let's see. So disadvantages are pretty simple and uh, can be ignorable basically, but yes, theoretically those are disad uh, disadvantages. So it is platform dependent. So what is this particular platform dependent is, so in Linux we have so many operating systems, okay. So the popular one on the server side is Red Hat or CentOS or Oracle Linux, okay. So and whereas the other uh, versions of Linux also you have OpenSUSE and other versions like Debian, Ubuntu, okay. So like this you have so many uh, kinds of operating systems available, okay. So if I write a script on uh, uh, a, a single platform, let's say on a Red Hat server, okay. So if I want to perform the same, or if I want to execute the same script on, uh, let's say, on an Ubuntu server, so there are chances it may fail. Why? Because, okay, in shell scripting what we are doing, the commands whatever we execute in our job, we'll just keep those commands in a script and we'll execute that particular script. Okay, so by now, what is the what is the uh, challenge over here is nothing but, okay, so whenever you are, uh, I mean, executing the same 
same commands on multiple platforms, there can be syntax differences or the command differences to perform the same job. Okay, so that's the reason. Okay, so it is a completely platform dependent. So you have to check each and every possible scenario and you have to make certain conditions. If it is, yes, you can overcome this one platform dependent, but you have to place pretty uh, more code into the scripting say, by checking whether what type of operating system it is. So the, the script you are running, whether it is a Red Hat Linux or if it is a Ubuntu Linux or whatever it Linux it is, you have to check it properly and so the commands belongs to that particular operating system, you can execute those. Okay. Yes, we can overcome this one by writing some extra code. Code, we can overcome this. No. So we have another uh, a small disadvantage with the shell scripting is uh, it's time consuming. Time consuming and more process. So why it is a little time consuming? So let me give you a small example, okay? So we have, uh, so all the time we're talking about shell scripting is about grouping the commands, okay? So whenever we group the commands, okay, what happens basically? So let me give you a small example. So this is the script, let's say, okay, so uh, let's say I have a couple of commands, okay, some command. One second. So I have one command, let's say, okay, so to do perform something, and second command to do something, third command, fourth command, something like that, okay. So five commands I have total, okay. So let's say I'm executing all the all the commands I just placed into, okay, so that particular script, I'm executing this particular script, okay, whatever it is. So, so dot slash that particular script I'm executing. Okay, so I'm executing this particular script, okay, obviously all these particular Okay, so commands will be executed. Now, how many, so if you just check how many, uh, okay, so how many number of process are being created, okay, on this particular thing, okay, if we see, okay, so how it, how it gonna be is, let me show you. Yes, so one command, two command. fourth command, fifth command. Okay, so some commands I have placed like this now. So I'm executing this particular script with some dot slash script. Now, so whenever I'm executing this particular script, what is going to happen? Okay, now, so this script is executing. Obviously, it requires a process ID. So this script is executing and it requires one process ID. So PID for that particular script. So the count is, so one process ID for this particular script, it, whatever it is executing. Now, so we have total five commands, so which is nothing but five process. Okay, so all together, okay, it has become six process. Now this is fine, but okay, let's go with some scenario, okay, so uh, this particular command if it fails, there is a chance this particular command may fail. Yes. So if this particular command fails, so let, let's have a scenario like that. Okay, all these commands are going to fail. If such scenarios, okay, so you have to validate it. Yes, we go with the shell scripting. We are going with the shell scripting all with all the time. We are talking about shell scripting is all about grouping the commands, whatever we execute in our day-to-day -day job. Yes. Now we group out commands. Yes, we are done. But what is the point of going with the shell scripting? Is nothing but now, so simple example, if this command is fail, okay, so obviously all these commands are going to fail. If those fail, that's fine, okay, but, okay, so if these failing of these commands, if they lead to, if they leads to some damage to the particular machine or that particular server, then yes, you have to bother about that one. So to avoid such scenarios, okay, so you all, it is always your responsibility to check whether it is done properly or not. So for that particular doing, you need to add some code in between command to actual command to command. You need to add some code, okay, so to validate 
whether your previous command has been executed properly or not. If it is failed or if it is a if it is failed with a known issue, okay. So if you want to fix it, yes. So you will perform. You have to add some code in between. So like that for each and every command, if it fails something, okay. If you want to add something, okay. So some additional code has came in between, okay. So that's I mean. So additional code is nothing but additional commands. Additional commands means more number of commands means. So previously it was five process. Now it is so let's say some 10 to 15 process okay so 15 process now okay so always we it is a simple uh, logic like the time taken for 15 commands is always more than time taken for five commands okay so it is a little time consuming theoretically yes it is time consuming but it is very it is uh, it is very uh, very small basically because you are saying here hours of hours so we, we see in the previous advantage okay so we are saving let's say hundreds of hours you want to push a single patch we are saving a lot of time basically or the hours and hours a lot of manpower we are saving so as those are uh, uh, very simple pretty commands but more process ideas means consuming more resources obviously yes but still it takes very less time and we can simply ignore that one So I think I missed it. Yes. So second one is time consuming or more process, or whatever it is. Yes. We can simply ignore this one. Why? Because we are saving a lot of time. Because of we are saving a lot of time, we can simply ignore this one. Now, so this is about uh, pretty basic, uh, very uh, very brief description about what is a shell and what is the use and what are the disadvantages with that one. Now, so okay, so now what we are going to teach in shell scripting? Yes. So shell scripting, we already talked about if we place those particular commands in a script and if we execute that particular script, our job is done actually. Okay, but why we are going with the shell scripting and what we are going to learn in the shell scripting is nothing but okay so the commands whatever you are placing in between here okay to make the logic or to check whether this particular command is success or fail or to check this command success or fail okay if it fails you need to do something okay so those things if you want to check okay so okay so we are going to always talk about the commands which can make the logic okay so we are not going to talk about the commands whatever your job requires okay so that is always yours because a, a system administrator has a different commands a database administrator has a different commands application administrator has a different commands okay developer will have its own commands okay so we are not going to touch your commands okay but we are going to always talk about the commands which can make the logic out of your commands okay so that is what we are going to talk in the shell scripting classes okay so as of now, any doubts or uh, shall we continue? Guys, Chandra, you there? Doubts, you can just raise your hand. I'll make unmute yourself and you can speak to the faculty. Chalapati, do you have any doubts? Chalapati, you are on air, but you are, do you have any doubts? Chalapati, you can speak to the faculty. Do you have any doubts? Fine. Any other any other candidate is having any doubts? Naveen, Kumar, Ravi, Madhu, Rajan, Sri Harsha, Suresh, Sudan, Yogesh, Sharma. One minute. One person is giving any doubt. I am fine. Suresh is also fine. None none so far. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Chalapati is also fine with us. Okay. So, sir, you can continue. Nobody is having any doubts. If they raise their hand, I will come back to you. Okay. Sure. Yeah. Thank you. So, so we will start our uh, actual uh, shell scripting topics. Okay. So, a couple of basics for today. So, just going uh, the basic one, which is... Uh, 